Welcome. It is four o'clock Eastern here on Thursday. And I thought I'd go live here today and talk a little bit about plot plans today. So plot plans become important. You may have a different name for them. But if you're working anywhere within the home building industry, chances are pretty good that you're going to run into the residential plot plan. And uh, I just thought, hey, it's a great way to get out there, talk a little bit about what's going on in here, talk a little bit about how you can read them. Because, you know, depending if you're new to the industry or you're just in a certain department that you don't necessarily get to work with this, you may hear the term plot plan and might, might not really even know what it is. So uh, that's what I'm hoping to go over today. If you're joining us, uh, you know, joining me from any different place, please make sure you take some time to get in the chat, say hi. If you're on Facebook, I think in the chat, I just threw in kind of a, um, a little link that you can go in and connect your name and picture in here. I think it just asks you to do it through Restream uh, because I'm doing that through a bunch of different places at once. Um, I can see who you are and, and when you ask a question, I can say, hey, thanks, you know, Brad out there or whatever. Uh, thanks for the question. Here's, here's the answer to it as best we can. Uh, anytime I go live, I love to have live Q&A. So please, please, please take some time, ask some questions. Um, I'll do my best to answer them as we go through. And if not, I'll say, you know what, I don't know, I'll get back to you. But that's just part of the fun as well. Um, so let's just jump into this. I don't think this should take a lot of time. But overall, there's really 10 things that I think anyone should know about a plot plan, no matter what area you're in. Um, these are just some things we'll do. So let's just kind of take a look at what we're going to look at today um as well so a little bit about me if you don't know me my name is brad hubbard i've been in the home building industry since 1993 i spent about 25 years in the family home building business um and oversaw the construction of about a thousand homes in my career um so we were what we call a custom volume builder uh, i've been working for a home builder software company for the last six years and i do consulting with home builders all across the uh, north america including the folks up above the border in the great uh, nation of Canada, as I like to say, too. Uh, so just a little bit about me and where I am. And right now, my whole focus is being able to teach out to others things that I've learned in that career. Uh, you'll find anytime I go live or anytime I like to do webinars, I am not one of those that you get in and all of a sudden I try to hard sell you on anything. I don't do that at all. I promised it in my promos here. It's not sell. I'm truly, I'm just here to uh, share some information. So I hope you'll get something out of it. Again, if you're joining me, feel free to throw your name in the chat. I try to keep an eye on that. I have a couple screens going on here as I go along uh, just to get it, um, you know, an idea of who's out there and can go from there, too. Anyway, this is really how we're going to be talking about what is a plot plan. And if you name it something other than a plot plan, I'd love to hear what you guys call it there. I've heard different things like you know, the residential uh, plat, P-L-A-T versus P-L-O-T, the way I do that. That's the tomato tomato, I think, uh, is the way I look at it. But maybe I'm just wrong is what I've always called it. Um, but we're going to just talk about what is it. You know, those chances are, again, especially if you're brand new, you may not even know what it is. So I just want to make sure I'm, I'm uh, going ahead and letting you know what that is. And then I want to go through 10 things. And I have some examples, two different examples we're going to look at on what you can tell if you know how to read a plot plan. All right. So, again, please, please, please take a look at the chat, ask questions, try to keep my eyes on the uh, on the chat as we go through here. And let me get this out of the way and uh, go ahead on that. So, all right, so you're lucky whoever's on Facebook said, how do you snooze this video? Because you didn't connect your name or anything with that link I put in there at the beginning um, that uh, I don't know, it just says Facebook user. So, uh, so you, it's good. I have no idea who just said that. So uh, thank you. And I'm glad you were just kidding too uh, as we go through that. I have some guesses, but we don't know. So let's just talk about what is a plot plan overall. Really, it's just a map of the lot. So I want you to think kind of if you're looking from the top down and that's, hey, Josh, uh, good to see you too. So I have a couple examples here. So a lot of times a plot plan, they can start. And Josh, I think you had, it was different. Didn't you put that in one of the comments in my promotion ahead of time on what you called the plot plan? I called the plot plan. I think you had a different name. So if you throw that in there, let me know. Um, so this is, again, a map of the lot. A lot of times, if you're getting ready to build before you actually uh, build and, and uh, put anything on, you see the lot itself. And that's what we're seeing here. There's no house on this year. If you've not seen a plot plan, I'll kind of go over this. A look over here of the different corners that you have on here. Um, and we're focusing primarily on this one. I don't know if I have a little thing I can do, a laser that you can kind of see those different types of things too. Um, but this is what we're going to see. Once you we get into this, you're going to learn what you're looking at here above too. So again, looking from the top down, if you're in a drone flying over and you're looking down to be able to do that too. Then 
this is one that has a house on it. So I actually took plot plans. These were from, from some properties on which uh, our company had built homes on it. You can see this is a pretty detailed one. There's all kinds of different sizes as we look closer to it uh, in one of our developments. So uh, we'll be able to use this to explain what you can learn uh, just from looking at it. So yeah, Josh, you're saying plat, P-L-A-T. Okay, good. I was thinking you had a different name for it too. I don't know, because you asked me, are you talking about something? But nonetheless, plot, plat, whichever you do it uh, as well. So this here has the lot. If you look kind of closely, hopefully this is large enough on your screen. There is an outline of a house. Remember, we're in a drone looking from above down. That's how we're uh, kind of doing a bird's eye view as, as uh, per se is what we're doing here. Okay. Why is it important anyway? Why should anybody care whether uh, they know what's in a plot plan? Well, there's a couple of things that uh, I think it's really important for. One, you ensure the house fits. So as you get in and you learn to kind of work with a plot plan, you learn how to fit a house on it. I did a, a lot of times old school way where I literally had, you know, this scale roller somewhere around. Uh, yes, I still have it. Um, instead of using computers to generate it and actually do a house that was kind of fitting in the lot because there's nothing worse as a home builder than to go back to a customer and say, oh, I'm sorry, but we sold you a house. We can't fit on your lot. I mean, that's embarrassing from the home builder side of things. And it's just one of those things you, you don't necessarily want to have to do. So uh, save a lot of time, a lot of trouble, and a lot of embarrassment if you know that your house can fit on the lot. And we'll talk a little bit about how you know the house fits on the lot as we go through this today. Okay. It's also important to know um, what you can or can't do on that lot in the future. So it might have to do with what can fit on the lot. But it also, as we go through this uh, this class today, I want to talk a little bit about, uh, you know, kind of what the zoning allows you to do. And, and if you know what that is and you get into knowing your zoning, you may find, hey, this will work or it won't work. Uh, nothing worse, again, than you build a house for someone two years, three years, 10 years down the road. You get a call and say, hey, I want to put up a fence in here and I'm not allowed to be able to put a fence in here because it's not allowed by zoning or something like that. And somehow it it often can become the builder's fault they didn't tell them about it. So you want to be able to know those types of things too and uh, be able to say, hey, um, you know, you can't do that in the future. Or if, you know, they want a pool or something like that. And I think I even have, um, you know, something in here too. If you don't, they want to put a pool in, fine, they can't do that. You usually have homeowners that aren't too, too terribly happy with you too. Uh, and then I put this last one here. It just helps ensure you're on the right lot. Uh, hard to believe, but in the 25 years, I've seen it more than once where um, someone in sales has, you know, doesn't realize what they're looking at on a plot plan, just gets handed a piece of paper and go, oh, okay, here, can you go ahead and sign this, uh, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Customer? They go ahead and sign it. Don't even realize that they're on the wrong lot. So we're going to look at how you know what lot if you're in a residential community that's already laid out for you. So you can go, oh, yes, this is the right lot. Um, and then later, when your superintendent goes out and actually digs the hole, they want to match up and make sure they're putting on the on the right lot too. And, and I've seen times when holes have been dug on the wrong uh, the wrong lot. I won't say it was our company, but I've I've seen it. Just just saying, I don't see that too. And I just have it points out other important information, and that's very generic here because that's really the essence of what the ten items that we're going to go through here next. Um, and again, if you're joining us, any questions you have, throw them in the chat. I'd love to be able to uh, answer them as best I can as we move forward. So without further ado, without doing some type of uh, funky David Letterman reference that many people, especially if you're a lot younger, won't get, <laughs> I'm just going to go into my top 10 list here of things of a plot plan can tell you. All right. So I have two different um, plot plans I showed you before that I'm going to use. And I'm going to refer to these the whole time as we move through here, because I want you to be able to kind of see it from the more simplistic view and one on the uh, plot plan that is definitely a lot more um, um, detailed than what you're seeing here. Um, so let's just talk real easy. The first thing is the street name. So a lot of times if you're looking at the plot plan, again, the bird's eye view from above, you can look down. And it'll tell you maybe the future address. So we look here and I see this is on Wellington Drive. Okay, great. This is the only street, if you're looking kind of closely as you look around, it's the only street on here. So we know that's the front of the lot. Uh, we know this is going to go onto Wellington Drive. So if someone wants to know what their address is going to be, we may not know the exact number because the post office is usually the one that is telling that. Uh, but at least you know what street they're going to be on, on a simple thing like this. 
Okay, if you have multiple streets involved, remember the other plot plan, if you've been with me from the beginning, has this one. We have streets all over the place here. So we have one over here, one down here, and even a third one here. And it actually goes in, there's kind of, it's not really a fourth one, it's the same one. This is a little courtyard that goes in around as you're looking at that. Um, so you go, okay, what happens here? Where's my address? The short answer is it depends. Depends on the municipality, it depends on the, the post office on here. Most usually take the way the house is facing. And I say that most. I've been in uh, certain areas where if you're on a you know a corner lot, the post office or the municipality says it's where the driveway comes out. It's not, you know, I don't care if you have a side entry garage and the driveway's coming out the side, but my house is facing this way, the address is really over here. So it really, really depends on the municipality. But if you say, okay, it's the way the house is facing, looking at the top of this, again, if you can kind of see this, and I probably have a pointer somewhere, I have not figured out where that is on here too. The garage here is at the at the front of the house. You know, here I can kind of see a porch as it comes down here. I know in this case, this house was facing Sagamore Court. Now my driveway in this case also came out in Sagamore Court, but just knowing which way it is will give you a good uh, good idea of what that address is going to be, what the street address is going to be in, in some way, because uh, you're going to have people that will ask and want to be planning for the future. All right, so number two, it's just which way is up or which way is north. Every plot plan I've seen have always had the north arrow. So look for it. It's going to look in different ways. We're going to see on the other one, it's a little skinny arrow, but it's still an arrow. That arrow is pointing north in this case. So if I'm looking at that, and uh, I know, uh, oops, let me jump down here. Man, mouse is going wild here. Uh, I know in this case, with this house we said was facing Sagamore Court, that would be facing kind of southeast at this point. If you kind of turn the, the paper to go what's north, that'll give you a good idea. And why is that important? I built for folks a lot of times that had uh, different reasons. They just wanted the afternoon sun on the patio. So if you knew they wanted the afternoon sun, they wanted to have, uh, you know, an east facing house. So the patio was in the west. So as the house, you know, the sun went down, it was going on there. I've had uh, a number of folks uh, of Indian faith that wanted to face due east or something like that. So you could have just religious reasons for reasons uh, that the uh, owners want to face a certain way. So by knowing that uh, northern point, if you have a customer at one point that you're working with that needs to face a certain way or asks you, you can look at the plot plan and know which way the house is facing. All right, yeah. Oh, there, there was my arrow. I knew I had an arrow there somewhere. I knew it was there somewhere. So this is that other one I said this was more simplified too. Right there is the arrow too. It looks different. The other one was kind of big, wide, and fat. This one's an arrow. Either way, the north arrow is there. And you should find that, and I would guess, about every single plot plan that you look at, too. Yep, this way here, I know this house is facing towards the east because you know, it's mostly mostly east on that one, too. All right, let's talk about lot dimensions. So as we look at this one here, it's real easy. It's pretty much just the length and width. This is a real easy one. This is pretty much a rectangle lot. Um, when you're looking at the plot plans, you can see the corner pins. One, two, and these are even on this one are clearly spelled out. It's easy to see. But right here, I can see there's some north, and this is just more of the, the engineers will do that. I wouldn't worry as much about that as the one below. This is showing 143.32 feet, and that is really from property corner to property corner, as you're seeing that. And I'm sorry if I'm looking off to the side rather than always looking at you. I'm looking at my screen, so I'm making sure I'm, I'm covering here as well. Okay, four sides, 100 foot, 100 foot, 143.71, if you can't read that there. So that's almost a perfect rectangle, just a little bit longer down below than it is up above. Easy to see on this one, really easy to see on this one. I like to just always point out, scale is super important to know. When you're reading blueprints, that's important to know. When you're reading things like this, uh, and you usually find the scale up here. Now, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on scale, but just know that you can get rulers that go to scale based on what this is. Uh, they look something like this. So it's like a one inch equals 20 feet or something like that. And I can see this one up here said one inch equal 30 feet. So you can find them. They look very similar to this. They have different ones for the actual architectural drawings versus what you use on land, uh, which are engineer scale. Um, so if you ever need to do that, you can look that up. You can find these things at a, a Staples or, a, you know, a, your favorite office supply place or Amazon or wherever you want to get those to. 
So let's bring in the more advanced one. This is definitely not a rectangle, as you can see. Now, if you can see, here's a point, 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 here's a point. There's even one right here, here. That's because this is not a rectangle. You can't tell from that. That scales down here. So I told you the scale you're going to see on every one, too. And that's important to know, especially if you want to try to fit something in. You want to try to fit a future pool or something like that. You go, OK, I know the pool is going to be a you know, a 20 by 40 or something like that, you can fit that in. But here it's harder to see because there's a lot more stuff on here. But here I can see this is 118.71 feet. That's a straight line from here way down to here. So that's that's pretty darn easy. What happens when you have all these kind of rounded and circled ones and you're going, wait a minute, I, I can't, my ruler doesn't bend that well too. Well, yeah, you're right. You can't really do that. There are some tools out there that help with that. But for the most part, you're looking at the angles and the radii. You're going to have a curve table up here or somewhere on there to say that. So if I look closely, this says like C203 right here. And I know this is super small, but I just want you to get the idea on that. C203, I can look up here and see the radius uh, length of that is about 100 foot of the radius. Um, again, chances are you probably aren't going to have to go into that much detail. But you never know. I've built for engineers who definitely want to know that. They'll eat those charts up all day long. It's kind of good for you to know that, you know, this is approximate length. And you could put an approximate length together on that. So, you know, this is about 100 feet, probably, uh, or it's 100 feet, but straight as the arrow flies, it's going to be a little shorter than that. But I'll give you a good idea on that, too. I always put this up here because I know those of you have gone through those uh, classes in high school. And uh, you said, when am I ever going to use, you know, accounting? When am I, when am I ever going to use angles or radii? Well, here's a chance when you might get a chance to do that. So your uh, your old geometry teachers are going, yep, I told you, you'd use that one day on good stuff too. So, um, so yes, you do use angles and radii. In... Okay. So the other thing, uh, that was kind of your property horns, is the size or the acreage of the lot as you go through there too. So everyone's going to do that. A lot of times it's going to show either in square footage and sometimes by acreage or sometimes both. So if you uh, should remember, or you should know, there's 43,560 square feet per acre. So you don't have, especially in residential communities, you don't have a lot that are a full acre. You do have some, obviously, you have some lots that are bigger. But each plot plan typically is going to tell you what that size is. And here in the middle of this one, and I don't know, and again, I apologize, I'm not sure how big it is on your screen. This is telling me this is 14,351 square feet or basically 0.33 acres. So we took the one acre divided by the square foot to give us how much of that point of the acre on that. Easy to find on this one. About everyone, it's not always going to be right in the center of the lot. Sometimes it might be off to the side. It might be down in the corner. Somewhere on that plot plan, if you look around, you're going to find the size of the lot. So people want to know that. So uh, I think, Colleen, I see you here in terms of uh, you know even the mortgage side. A lot of times you might need to know the, the lot rise and those types of things too. Here's my more advanced one. Here I can see it's a little bit bigger on this one. It's 9,234 square feet, 0.212 acres on that too. Again, you're going to find it on every one. It's just a matter of, of locating it. A lot of times they do put it right in the middle of the lot as you look at that too. Why is it important? Impervious coverage is a big uh, item on this too. Now, impervious coverage is a concept that when you go for building permits these days, it's for water conservation. When it's a vacant lot that's out there, water falls into the grass goes into, uh, you know, into the ground and gets absorbed. When you start putting things like a house on there, a paved driveway, a sidewalk, water can't penetrate down into the ground because there's a solid object. That's what's known as impervious coverage. So uh, I'll do one of my free plugs, and this is not that I'm selling anything, but I do have kind of my ever building home, uh, my ever growing home building glossary at bradhubbard.com impervious coverage. I just added this morning when I was getting ready for this. I was like, no, I don't have that term on there. It's just a bunch of terms. It's always growing. So if you get a term, you're not sure if you know what it is. Jump on over there. It's just a matter of learning a term. If you have one that's not there, there's even a place on there for you to submit the the uh, term to me, and then I can add it in, in the very near future. So I'm hoping that becomes kind of a very, very large volume. It has, I think, 200 words in there now or something like that, too. Okay. So <laughs> Lot number, municipal information, you go through here, you can find this information on a plot plan too. Again, you can verify the lot number. I mentioned at the very beginning, if you were here, that uh, I've seen times when a salesperson would hand something to a customer, have them sign it's the, the wrong lot. That's kind of embarrassing to go back and tell them again. 
uh, you know, superintendent got something in there and they go and lay out a house. And let's say there's a whole bunch of rectangles right in a row. You know, it's easy enough if you're not really looking close enough to pick up the wrong one. And what if this person wanted so far off the property and this person wanted so far off the property, it was different. You had the wrong one. You dig a hole and put a foundation in. And it's a pretty expensive, it's, um, you know, mistake to, uh, to try to fix up. So you can verify the lot number. Again, if it's in a residential development, if it's a scattered lot somewhere, you might not have the lot number on there. But in this case, this is one of the developments. It did have it on mine. It also has municipal information on here. So this happens to be, again, local for us, Lower Allen Township, Cumberland County, um, because that's important to know where you go for your building permits. Uh, it's important to know what uh, codes they are enforcing, because here in PA, at least, each municipality may have a different set of codes that they're uh, you know, going to be uh, checking out as you build the house. So it's good to know that. Other ones, and I think I had over here, I think I had it over here. Um, I pulled out some of the information because obviously it was a customer's information and didn't necessarily need to be in here, but um, it'll also give you information that just might be code related or something on that too. Center, this one, this one actually says lot 35. It was subdivided out some time ago. It was in the existing neighborhood, but we had the lot. Um, you can a lot of times find even deed information, the um, you know, tax number, those types of things in here too. Uh, a lot of times, uh, you also see things like this special zoning requirements that have to do with that specific municipality that you go, oh, you can only have this in here. So if you want to go in and build duplexes or, uh, you know, a six unit townhouse, townhouse, you may find zoning requirements or something on there that says, no, you can only do a single family, you know, a single house here. That's not always on there. I didn't have anything like that on my first one, but certain plot plans will have that. And it's really nice if you have an engineer who puts that on there because it's, it just gives you another idea to look at and do a double check as you go through that. Moving on, our number six. So elevations and slopes. Um, best way to kind of show this is our elevations and slopes are grading lines. So this one has it. I'm going to jump back to the last screen here for a second. This is a real simple one. I don't have any grading plans on this one, um, but I do on this one. And they're shown typically as lines. So you look for the grading lines if they have them. So this is kind of an as built. The house was already built. Um, sometimes you'll have that, or I guess this was the plan to be done because it says proposed crawl space. You can see proposed garage, proposed structure on there too. Gives you an idea of how the house will sit on there, how the ground will flow away from it too. Little uh, secret on here, the closer those grade, grade lines are together on the map, the steeper the lot is the steeper the slope is because they're essentially depending on it might be every five feet or every 10 feet away so the closer you move move the the closer you move those together the steeper it's going to get because you're going down five feet or 10 feet per one it just depends on that so keep that in mind if you see a lot of lines on there too you know chances are it's going to be not a flat lot and we've all had customers accounts that i thought i was buying a flat lot this is a way ahead of time for you to go through and go okay do you realize we have some uh, some slopes on here too. Again, why important? Stormwater drainage. This shows kind of a stormwater kind of. If you see, it comes over here, wraps around here, and then comes back, and then even shows kind of a two percent. So this uh, engineer actually went down. Said you're going to have about a two percent fall as you come down through here uh, to let the water flow. It comes down between the property lines and then out to the street. Uh, so that's one important reason why you may have grade lines on there. Others are just to see uh, slopes of driveways, things like that. You always get that person that wants the flat driveway. Everybody wants the flat driveway. You need to have some slope to be able to get the water off. Uh, but if you don't know your grading on that and you're not really paying attention, especially in sales, and you have the ability to choose the garage on the left or the right, you may decide to put it on the wrong side of the lot. Maybe you'll put it on the side that has more grade and you think, well, that's the low, you know, the low side of the lot. Then all of a sudden you have a driveway that's like this, that you need a ski bar to get up to the top. And usually customers aren't super happy about that. They just didn't realize that um, even though they signed off on it, we all know they haven't read plot plans either. So they're not necessarily going to know. So as a professional on the building side, you want to be able to know that so you can advise your customers early on oh, you are going to have a slope over here. Just know that, or this is about what it looks like too. Yep, so you don't get that call. I thought it was a flat line. I'm going, yeah. These are probably some really, 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 really close grade lines on the back of this one too. Uh, but you try not to get that type of thing done. Okay, and just remember scale too. So 
again, you might see a lot of lines on here, but if it's, you know, super small scale or super big, it might not be as bad as what it looks. It just depends on how much it's been compressed down. And I may do something here in the future on kind of reading scale, um, but not today. I just wanted to make sure you do that scale. All right, so building setbacks are good. We're up to number seven here too. Building setbacks are really how far from the property lines you can build a house or really put any structure on that too. So that's important um, because you can't just go plop a house down wherever you want on, on, a, uh, on a lot, not typically at least. Usually you're gonna see a dotted line that's somewhere within the property lines here, and that is the building setbacks. And you can see there's a couple notes here that actually say setback on here. It doesn't always say that. Most of the time it does. I would say probably 99.9% .9 of the time you're going to see something that says the word setback on it. That is, again, a little bit that has to do with zoning um, and what is allowed by municipality and what can be built in there. Now, each municipality may be different. Most all of them are going to say the whole house has to be in there. Um, a lot of them say the decks and patios have to be within that too. There are others that say, well, a patio has to be in, a deck can go over it. So that really depends on the municipality too. But it's important for you to know at least where the house is going to sit so you know if it can fit in there too. And I've even had some municipalities that said, well, porches can go over. I don't care. It's just the main living area of the house. So, But still to know where that is because when the house gets plotted, you need to make sure it fits within the setback line. House can't just fit on the lot. It has to fit within the setback lines. Like I said, it's important for pools and decks. There are some municipalities that will not let a pool outside the setback lines, decks, patios, things like that I already mentioned too. So here I can see on this particular one, I have 25 foot from the rear property line right in here to that setback. I've got what, 10 foot on this side, 40 foot from the front property line here. And it's probably the same on the other side. Yeah, it's probably 10 foot on this side. It doesn't say... But if I had my scale ruler, I could measure that out and go, oh, it's 10 foot over here. It's 10 foot up here. And you have an idea that you have to stay on there. And you want to have that set back between lots because you don't want them side by side by side by side in single family because, you know, Mrs. O'Leary's cow took down what Chicago way back in, I don't know what date it is. If you know the date, throw it in, in the user thing and let me know what it is. Uh, townhomes, you know, you have zero lot lines and those types of things too. Okay. Important to know from the front setback, a lot of people don't necessarily realize. They think it's from the edge of the road or the paved road, and that's not necessarily the case. A lot of times the property line actually starts in residential communities. A lot of times it even starts behind that public sidewalk. So the sidewalk that goes across the front that you get to shovel if you're up here in the north with me uh, in the winter isn't really on my property line, but I'm taking care of that. So I don't know. Take it up in municipalities, so you can get them to, to shovel for you if you do that. Good luck with that, though, too. Here's our, our more advanced one. Really, really close, depending on the screen you're on here. But I'm showing 7.5 setback here, 20 foot on this side, 20 foot on this side, 20 foot on this side. And I didn't put it in the one, but it's 20 foot here. So it's 20 foot everywhere, except for the one in between that property and the property beside it, 7.5. So you'll find them. Sometimes you got to look if it gets as messy and uh, as detailed as what this one is. Uh, this, this was a tight fitting house, as you can tell. Let's talk about driveway location. A lot of people, driveway is important to them uh, because you, know, you spend a lot of time, you put the basketball nets up, you drive on it, you have to get into your house one way, those types of things. Again, remember, we're looking from the top down. So you should be seeing something that looks like a driveway. And it actually, you know, will often say drive on there. I knew whenever I did them by hand, I would even shade in in pencil. And back in the olden times, me and Nate Blink can hang it out. Uh, but here I'm able to see what the slope of the driveway is too. About a 10% slope on that. And you have to decide at what point is that acceptable for the customer. Sometimes you can't do anything about it. You have to set it at a certain level to make sure, you know, the house next door doesn't get all the water and, and all those types of things. But at least knowing how to read it, knowing how to find it is important too. Slope, I already talked about, it goes into your impervious coverage calculations. I talked about impervious coverage earlier. A lot of municipalities, at least here in PA, make you actually calculate how many square feet you have of driveway, how many square feet of house space versus how many square feet of the lot to make sure you don't go over 25% or 30% or 28% or whatever it is at that point. Side entry garages are important. No, this actually is a side entry garage. If you look closely enough, you can see a little bit of a turnaround here to pull the car out and come back down. 
Um, that's important because you want to make sure you have enough room really for it too. Um, I've seen times you try to put it in, people can't back out without running over the curb or something like that. You end up something like this here too. Um, and you're stuck. Buyers don't typically like that too. So for, if you have any lawyers out there, don't get them after me. This is Austin Powers. I don't own that. I have no rights that I just use it for edutainment purposes only. So keep the lawyers away from me on that one too, please. Uh, and then just important for driveways too, is just know the location with respect to intersections. So a lot of uh, municipalities say, hey, you can't have a driveway within X amount of feet of an intersection because that's kind of a, um, you know, it's a hazard you can pull out of your driveway and someone's flying through the intersection and, and could just be prone to more accidents. So that's again, getting into more municipal regulations, but it's important to know that because, you know, I've seen a lot of times where someone has gone, they have their house plotted out, they submit for the building permit, not even thinking about the intersection and it gets denied and that delays the building permit over and over again, because you say you can't have the driveway that close to the intersection. So that's why it's important to know where the driveway is. And again, the customers are going to want to know, as I mentioned earlier, your, your address may have something to do with where your driveway comes out to. Easements and rights of way. This, these are just really areas set aside for others to access your property. A lot of times there are people say, oh, I don't want anybody on my property. Well, you got to have access. Utility companies need to come on. If something goes wrong with their underground utility, they need to be able to come onto your property and do that. And that's what uh, the easements or rights of way allow you to do. Uh, could just be future improvements. It might be kind of a future sidewalk to a park that's uh, back behind your lot or something like that. You usually see something like a right of way down here. This is on a street from the center. It's 60 feet from the center of the street onto the property. I mentioned a little bit before how your property kind of starts a lot of times in residential communities behind the sidewalk, actually. So this would be from the center of the street, you know, 30 feet one way uh, onto the, uh, the property, which typically goes in there. That allows the municipality, if they have a sewer backup or a water or main break or something, they can go in there um, and be able to do that, too. So here's one here. It's actually showing a, a, a light pole here from our local utility company. Uh, if you look really closely, you'll be able to even find things like utilities. Uh, those big boxes that are sometimes in the yard that after people move and go, I didn't know there was a big box in my yard. Look on the plot plans. A lot of times they, they'll be placed on there if you're looking close enough and hard enough to. And again, you may say, hey, I had someone sign off and say they knew it was there. Most buyers are not going to necessarily know unless you actually point it out. So be the professional, be the one to show them how to do that. Okay, and on this one here, I just have a couple of the street right of ways back behind the sidewalk, those types of things to show you too. Okay, encroachments. This is probably more so in existing uh, existing communities when you're doing infill lot, but it can happen in the developments once you've built through that. And encroachments are really things that are on your property that have come on to a customer's property that shouldn't be, and probably from the neighbors. And everything I think is kind of important. You can see I put in the yellow here too. So things like someone's fence has come across. You get that a lot. You, know, you go to build a house and you know, some people are cool with it, like, yeah, it goes over the property, it's fine. Other people are like, nope, I want to off my property. I don't want anything on that. So it's important to be able to look on a plot plan and know what encroachments are. So on this one here, I have, you can see it says an existing stone wall. Fortunately, it's not encroaching. It doesn't come over the property. There's a split rail fence over here that's shown. It doesn't come on this property too. I don't have any encroachments on here, but I've seen times when you've seen, you know, a fence come across a corner or something like that, or the neighbor here um, you know, they got in, didn't have their property pins in for whatever reason, thought they knew exactly where it is. And, um, but now they, you know, it's, it's a little too late at that point too. So, um, so thank you. Whoever said live is the only way to learn. Um, I'm not going to tell anybody you were late or anything like that because you're coming in through Facebook. Thank you for the, the quote here too. I, I can't tell who you are. It just says Facebook user, unless you connect, there's a link up there if you want. Not needed. We can always catch up later, but thank you for uh, being here too. Now that you're at the end here, I'm at number 10 of my 10 things too. So you'll have to watch the recording as we get through here too. I, as I come to the end, I just want to remind you me somewhere. If you're not yet connected on LinkedIn, I'm active there. I try to do something every day. I have a Facebook group called Welcome to Home Building. So if uh, some of you are probably watching from there, but if not, and you're on Facebook, look it up. I'm close to about 200 people at the time of this recording. So I want to get over 200, hopefully here before too long. It's a place where, again, like this, I'm not there to spam you. I probably will tell you about webinars I do like this, but again, I'm not there to sell you. I keep a very close watch on so other people aren't spamming you in there too. It's just a great place to come in and learn a little bit about home building. 
hopefully have a little bit of fun, poke fun at each other and, and go from there too. So there it is. It's a free group at that point too. Um, and then I had mentioned earlier on my website there at bradhubbard.com. Do I have a little arrow that pops up on this? I don't know if I do. No, I guess so. Bradhubbard.com. I have this incredible growing home building uh, glossary that I've been building for a couple months now. I want to keep adding to it. So if you come across a term that you don't know, jump on over there and take a look. There's chances are you may find it's all alphabetized, it's all fancy like that. Uh, yeah, at least I think it is. I'm, I'm pretty good with the alphabet on that too. If you say, hey, there's something in there I want to know that's not in there, there's also a form on there you can submit to me and say, hey, can you add this word in here? I'd like to know it. Happy to do that. Want this to continue to grow, continue to be a great resource too. I'll just kind of stop. I don't know if there's any questions or so. I know whoever, the Facebook user that is nameless to me that just came in, you only saw one of my 10 things right now, so maybe you don't have questions. Uh, but I just always let, leave a moment um, just in case they do. I don't always get them, but uh, we'll just wait and see. Other than that, like I said, the, you know, if you have ideas for future classes, please let me know. I want to continue to do this overall. Hey, Sonia. Uh, what would be, okay, the recording the overall communities. Oh, did, there must be a question that I'm not seeing. Because, Paul, you're answering this too. Thank you, Colleen. Because, um, Paul, you had answered one for Tanya. That's the thing with, with the restream. I don't always see everything in live time, I think, like I'm supposed to. So thank you for answering that if there's a question out there that I didn't see. So, and uh, Paul actually was able to do that plat versus plot, P-L-A-T. That's how I always understood the P-L-A-T was the overall development, you know, 100 lots, whereas the plot is an individual lot. That's how I was understood that, but I thought maybe I was wrong. But thank you, Paul, for uh, um, for straightening that out, too. Good. Yep. Uh, Colleen's telling me it'd be a horrible utility box in the front yard. Um, yeah. What would it look like? Um, a lot of times on mine, I don't think I have on this one, do I? Let me just jump back here. I don't, I don't think I do. Now, a lot of times, yeah, I think I'm lucky on here. It looks like a nice little easy square. It doesn't look scary or horrible looking on there. It looks like a square. Sometimes I'll have a little point, a pointed box that say utilities. They're not always on the plot plan. Sometimes uh, in a plat, as Paul was talking about, if it has you know a whole bunch in there, um, sometimes there's a separate page on the overall that's called the utilities plat, and, and that has the utility boxes in there. Usually, at least the engineers we've used would put them on there. And again, it was just just a simple square. Uh, usually would either have something pointing to it saying utility box or would maybe have like U slash B on it, which would be, you know, would be utility box and you wouldn't know what it is unless you knew. But, but that is important because you're right. A lot of people don't like that. Um, and then they end up going, oh, I didn't know it. And then they want to move lots or something like that. Hopefully they notice it before you actually start digging. Uh, or got the permits, but that's not always the case. So, yeah, look on your utility plot plan. It should be on there most of the time um, and occasionally depending on the areas too. Sometimes like here in Pennsylvania, PPNL will go and they would actually give a separate one that was even separate from the regular plot. But most of the time you're going to find something, at least around here. I, I guess I shouldn't speak for that overall too. But yes, definitely know what that is. Look for it. Walk the lots if you can as well, too. Paul saying, yeah, great. Uh, when presenting a plot plan, typically highlight in yellow the footprint of the home and the driveway. It helps the buyer understand. That's that's a great, great tip on that, Paul. And I probably should have done that on here. Uh, I'm going to have to figure out how they use the little uh, highlights and all, too. But, yeah, it's great as you're sitting down, especially if you're asking them to sign off. Highlight through it. Make sure they understand what it is. You may even get fancy and color-coded and those types of things. Maybe look around, spend some time before you meet with the customer, see if there's anything weird out there. Some of the tips I was going over today and go, hey, you realize this has a slope at the back, especially if you hear the customers thinking it's a flat lot, because it looks can be deceiving when you're standing out on a lot. You go, man, this is a flat lot. And all of a sudden they wonder, how did I get an exposed basement? Well, because by the eye, when you're out in the middle of you know, nowhere, looks can be very deceiving, but you get someone down, you know, your superintendent or someone standing at the back of the lot, all of a sudden their eyes are at your belly button, you know there's some fall in that too. And that's that may be, yeah, that may be a future class or something to talk about that too. Um, because it always looks flat until it isn't, you know, until it comes down to. Folks, I'm uh, thank you for this and, and thank you, uh, thank you, Colleen, for your uh, chats into me. I know they they came actually direct rather than over in the chat 
over here too. Um, Paul, thank you for being in there too, because you must be seeing some questions. I'm not, I apologize if someone put some chat in and I didn't get it in here. I think there's a bit of a delay because I didn't see the initial questions that came down there too. Uh, so I got to do this a little bit, uh, a little bit different here in the future too. And, uh, but, uh, but thank you all for taking some time here and taking some time out of your day to sit and listen to me for a while. Hope you found this useful and uh, look for some of these here in the future too. I'm just going to continue to put out some education for those who want to know. And thank you, Paul. I appreciate that too. Thank you, Colin. Uh, Colleen, have yourself a great, great weekend. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.